Welcome back and we are currently on video 9. So in this video we're going to be working on the front end within the Angular application. And what we'll do is when we log in we'll retrieve the token, we'll store it in local storage, and then we'll pass it on to an API, a protected API, and see if we can get some values from that protected API using our token. So the first thing we'll need to do is in our login method we'll store the token that we get from logging in we'll store that in local storage and we'll do that first so inside of our angular application we'll start inside of our auth service so i'll open this up and here we'll need to make a change to the login method and while we're here let's go ahead and open up our other service this other service is where we're going to call our our secret api or get our secret information from our api and i called it secret service and the third file we'll be working inside of you could take your pick but I'll pick the home component. So when we load in the home component, we'll call this method here. And I'll open up the TS file. So these are the three files we'll be working in throughout the video. And we'll start inside of the auth service. And the only thing we need to do in here is make a change within our login method. So right towards the bottom here, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take the token that we get from the backend and we'll store it in local storage and we'll call it token. So whenever the user logs in, we'll have a token within local storage. And that's the only change we need to make in here. We can save this file. Let's jump into our secret service next. And the first thing we'll do in here is we'll set up a new method and I'll call it get values. And the job of this method is to get all the string arrays from our backend. And this is going to return an observable of string array. So let's bring in that from RxJS. And what we're getting back is a string array, exactly like the way it is set up within Postman. So we're getting back an array of strings. And we're making an HTTP call. So I'm bringing that in here. And we're making a call to localhost 5000. So let's go ahead and set that up. I'll add a variable up here at the top. So that's called base URL, and we're bringing this in from the environment, so I'll bring that in. So we're calling localhost 5000, and the endpoint is value. So now we need to pass in the HTTP options. That's how we're gonna pass in the token. So let's set up this variable, and I'm gonna add this at the top up here. So I called it HTTP options. And what we're doing here is we're setting up a new instance of the HTTP headers, and we can go ahead and bring that in actually. And you want to bring that in from Angular Common HTTP. So we're passing in the headers and we're using the authorization exactly the way we set it up within Postman. So within the headers, we're using the authorization, and then we're passing in a bare token. And that's exactly the way we're setting that up right here. So we're getting the token from our local storage that we set up within our auth service like we did right here. So now that we got our header set up, you wanna pass this within here as the last parameter of your get method. So if we have a valid token now, we should be allowed to get our values from that protected API. So now that our secret service is all set up, let's call this method from our home component. And the first thing we'll do here is inside the constructor, we'll bring in our service and we'll bring that in from our shared folder. And then we'll call that new get values method we set up and I'll call that from within the ng on init. So we're calling on our secret service. We're calling the get values method. That's going to give us back a observable. And then we'll immediately subscribe to it. And all I'm doing here is I'm just going to log all the information to the console, all of our secret values. And that's it. We can save this. I already have the application running. Let's check it out in the browser. So the home page should automatically refresh. So if we go into the developer tools and into the console, and now we're getting this 401 unauthorized, and that's exactly what you're looking for. And the reason we're getting that is because we're not passing in a token or a valid token. And if we go into the application, and here is our local storage, and this is where we're gonna store the token when we successfully log in. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'll click on the login, put in a valid username and password, and we'll log in. And now, as you can see, we added a token here. 
So if we go back to the home page and then go down to console, now we're getting this error still. And the reason is we have to refresh it. It's not refreshing the token properly. And we'll actually take care of that. But if we refresh it, we have a token now. And now we're successfully getting the values. So let's take care of that refreshing issue of our token. We'll do that now. So to take care of the refreshing of our token, it's pretty simple. If we go inside of our, our secret service, towards the bottom here, I'm gonna add in a new method. And the job of this method is to return us a fresh HTTP options. And then I'm just gonna cut this out right up here. And get rid of the space up here, clean it up. And then within here, I'll return it. And then I'll make sure towards the end here, I'll return the HTTP options. Now I'll call on that, close it up correctly. So whenever this is getting called, it will get a updated bear token. That's a quick way of doing that. Then I'll copy this and replace this. We'll call our method. And this method is going to return us a HTTP options. Make sure we call it correctly. I forgot to add this to it. Save this and let's test it out one more time. So if we refresh it, we're still getting our values. The reason is, is we have a valid token within our local storage. Let's clear out our token. So I'll select it and then clear it out. Now, if we go back to the console, refresh it again. And now we're getting a 401 unauthorized. The reason is, is we're not passing in a token. So let's go and log in and we'll create a new token. And then if we go back into our local storage, we have a token now, a new fresh token. And then if we go back to the home page and select console again, this automatically updates. We don't have to refresh the, the browser every time we want this to update. Now in later videos, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be automatically decoding this token. We'll be setting that up. I think it's in video 11, but it's in a later video. But next we're ready to move on to video 10. So now we're getting into the section where we're going to start applying roles, claims, and policies to users. Oh, and by the way, that's going to be video 13 where we start decoding drop tokens within the spa or within the client. And we'll be doing that at video 13, not 11. But now in the next video, let's set up where we can assign roles to users and we'll be doing that next.